Well, we're ready to get started. Didn't take us long to get here. We're going to jump right in and start looking at AWS. AWS offers something they call a free tier account. It means that you can create an account for free. All you're going to need to do that is one of these and one of these. But, but don't worry, it really is free. They just have to validate your identity. So they make you give them a card. And they also do that because if you use something that's not free, they want to have a way to charge you for it. So you've got to have a card, you got to have a phone, you have those two things, you can set up a free tier account. So to use the free tier here at AWS, go to aws.amazon.com, choose pricing, and go to the AWS free tier. Here you'll see an overview of what's included in the free tier, what's featured, what's 12 months free, what's always free. So you can look through that if you want to. Take some time to do that if you desire. We're going to click on create a free account. And immediately it brings us into the form. So I'm just going to fill all of this information out and go through the process. It's a very basic process to create this free account. Fill out your information, you'll provide your credit card, and they're going to validate some information with you based on your phone number. Give them all of that information, and then you'll have your free account, and we'll start using that as soon as I'm finished creating it here. So what I would recommend for your free account is that you choose personal instead of professional and that way you're just providing personal information because notice on professional you're going to have a company name and extra things as well. If you're creating this for a company to do some testing, sure, leave it on professional, but usually you'll go to personal for yourself and this way you've got something that you can learn with at home. So I'll go ahead and put in my name and phone number and so forth. Select the country, put in your address. city, state, and zip code. And then you basically want to look over the AWS customer agreement. I've already read that before. So I'm going to check the box and click on create account and continue. Next, it needs my payment information. So for this, that's where I pull out my trusty credit card that I'm going to enter during the creation of the account. So you'll just want to use a credit card here that can be billed if there is ever a need for any billing. But just be cautious about your use within the system and you can avoid billing altogether during the learning process. And go ahead and submit that credit card information. Next is where your telephone comes into play. So they're going to call you on your phone, but you have to type in the characters in the CAPTCHA first. So we'll enter the characters and click on Call Me Now. So you're going to receive a call from Amazon asking you to enter the four-digit number. Simply enter that number and wait for them to give you ensuing instructions. And the good news is that if it's successful, you'll be able to simply click on Continue and you're ready to select a support plan. Now the key here is to go with the free support plan rather than the developer or business plan because they're going to charge you higher rates, giving you extra support and things like that. So we're going to stay with the free plan. And then you can personalize your experience if you want to at this point in time. So you can fill in the blanks to receive recommendations catered to your role and interests. I'm not interested in getting anything catered to my interests. So I'm going to click on sign into the console. So I'm going to go ahead and log on to the console and put in my email address. and click on next, and then it'll ask me for my password. This is the password I entered during account creation, so make sure you get that right. Click sign in, and you'll land at the console. So we've successfully created our AWS account, and we've successfully logged into the console. Keep in mind that, again, the only reason for the need for the credit card is in case you go outside of the free tier. Be careful with what you do inside of AWS, and you'll never be charged anything. Even if you make a mistake or you intentionally want to play around with something for a little while that costs money, if you run a more powerful instance, for example, than what you have for free, and you just run it for an hour or two, you're going to incur maybe 20 cents to $2 in cost. So it's not going to be really, really an extensive cost. And therefore, you can even use some of the non-free things to learn about them without really going into cost levels that are too much for most people. So we've got it done. We have our account created. In the next episode, we can explore the management console.